So my plan was to go through all the rulers and just release them one after the other onto the channel. But uh, I figured that King Harold would be our last and after Duke uh, Kulin no one else would be released. But there we go. Kagan Liao Hongji is the next one. And these are the challenges. We'll look at all that once we're in the game. So we'll just play as him in Iron Man as is tradition with the sunset invasion being off everything else being on and set to the standard settings basically so into the game we go and as is tradition I don't know nothing about this man so let's check out him and the challenges so Hagan Liao Hongji of the Liao Haganate. Emperor Dao Zong would be remembered as the emperor who ignored the corruption that would destroy his empire, rejecting the advice of his wife, Xiao Yunyun, to end the corruption and paying little respect to the role he had as emperor. He would allow his officials to fool him into executing the empress after being convinced she had written a love poem about an affair. He would also execute the crown prince as well as various other officials following the advice of I don't know how to pronounce that and I'm not going to try. He would realize his mistakes later, however the corruption in Liao was beyond repair. We start in 1066. We are being a Khan, a horse lord. Reading a little bit about him, it's, it's an odd choice apparently because most of his uh, lands would lie outside of uh, what we see, like stretching all the way over to Japan. Uh, so, <laughs> alright. But who, who cares really? So let's check what do we have uh, to do. So, we need to have as many temples in our realm managed by a Buddhist as we can. Are we Buddhist ourselves? We'll have to check. We need 12 Buddhist temples, uh, which is a dynastic feat. We need landmass, which is not the hardest thing to do as a Khan. It looks rough, but it's doable. So also dynastic and clanky get along with other clans. Ensure clans have an opinion of higher than and this is also dynastic so none of these we have to finish as Kagen Liao Hongji I'm really butchering those names but oh well and you do so that's neat um, we kind of broke the UI down here I don't know what I mean we, we got got more points than it can count we're not in this for the points anymore we, we're in this for finishing all the challenges the monarch's journeys because i like them right uh i do have a playlist about how to play horse lords on this channel i don't play them very often and the playlist is from last year so it'll be a little bit of catching up for me as well i do enjoy horse lords and they but they can be a bit tough to get into um then again usually i start somewhere over here with a smaller horse lord empire and those are really difficult because the starting years are the hardest uh playing as a horse lord but if you're already sort of established and we have very few borders around us it should be much easier i feel like we might even try and go south with this one for once usually you kind of stretch over here because there's all these horse lords anyway but we'll figure it out uh first things first we are a khan and we are buddhist very good. I've never really played as a Buddhist, I don't think. I've I've got the um, Uniting India achievements. I did this once. It was a real long time ago, so I have to look at all these things. We have one uh, tribute paying dude. It's this guy. Right, okay, let's check through these things. We have uh, an heir. Is he our only child? He is our only child. Our wife Shogu Shogu, she's a bit old. So what are we good at? Nothing. <laughs> good start. Let's uh, pick stewardship because we are an indulgent vestral, so we go this direction and this is our highest trait anyway. So maybe we can do something with it. Uh, we wish to, let's see, defeat fear. Okay. Reject cruelty. 
These are interesting. These come from the religion. But for now, we want to groom an heir because I'm not too fancy on just having one child here. Let's check the line of succession. Our marshal will inherit everything and thus we will lose Magnetic Nomad Succession. Let's see how it works. Most prestige. Right, that was how it worked. So we need to live a long life and get him to get a lot of prestige. We'll send him down a struggle way to a strict marriage and let's get him a guardian who's good at warfare. So she might teach him to be brave and stuff. We can create the kingdom of Mongolia. We can't create anything because we don't have the money for it, but we could potentially do it. Our special minor title to grant. Let's do this. People don't like us. Why? Plan sentiment low. They're of a different Buddhist school. Okay, they like us, sort of. Let's throw around some titles, getting these people to like us a little bit better. Our Kundur will be the lady who is also our advisor, apparently. Also be our court tutor. And our commanders can be better pick these men all right so starting in a position as we do right now with the title log loss looming and everything it's not easy we're going to disallow ourselves to lead troops because we're really bad at it anyway um so we put in the guys we do have and let's check out the clans this is the first thing that we need to do we wish to form a blood oath but we're not going to get to because they don't like us enough so let's unpause for a moment because the sentiment should change a little bit here doesn't. Our prestige is apparently really low, so this is a big issue here. We could offer them a concubine. We should honestly take concubines ourselves first. Quick one, especially. We're going to take all of them because we need a lot of boys, a lot of heirs here. Let's see if we can't even find another one. Find women at a halfway decent age. Let's say, yes, you want to join the court. There's only these two. Let's get her then. Right, so we can't really do anything with the clans right now. Um, and there are two societies for us to join. The... Savaka Sangha which are basically a religious order or the eagle warriors which are definitely something you want to do in our case so we will fight to prove ourselves to be another recruit here I like the music though for this neat so religion doesn't really matter right now I don't think moral authority is low as hell anyway one of our clans wish to be independent. Um, can't compose a book because we're not really smart. We could choose a war horse and we should. And because it gives us prestige monthly and we'll call it dragon. That's the first thing we want to do. Promote the commander. Right, our horde. Hordes are important. Hordes are all important in this. So we could get some stuff with piety. 
and their upkeep is also piety i believe or oh, they're really cheap one of those so we could get ketan auxiliaries uh, ketan is the culture that we are from which is one of the barbaric cultures to chinese um do we like this symbol here Where could we see it big here? That's actually a little bit smaller than there. It's, it's nice. It, it's kind of neat. Nothing special. A house Liao crest. Okay. Back to the retinue. So, of course, prestige is the next best thing. And you go higher and higher in what you want. You could go for gold, but... Well, it's gold, right? And upkeep is not the cheapest thing in the world. And we don't earn all that much right now as it is. See? Yeah. There's a duel. And we have won the duel, which is lovely. Meaning we are not wounded but we get the prestige out of it allowing us to let's see how much prestige do we earn a bunch let's get us some more prestige based retinues because that's all we really got to work with if we go to war let me check this okay so we have potential allied troops 2500 Potential being really the important word here, because if we look at our vassals... Ah, very good. We can get a Blood Oath with one of our clans. Which is good. Blood Oath are important, though, so these are going to join us every single time we fight, basically. But let's check here. Uh, these are not sending anything because they are nomadic rulers. So they get to choose if they join us when we call them in or not. Can't form a blood oath with them. We can't offer them a concubine. Not going to take it. Maybe let's give it to him. It meaning her. <clears throat> Prove our opinions a little bit. So next what we need to do is kind of look around where to go first. So he's he's very weak. Oh, he's part of ours. Oops. I'm a silly filly. So he's a weak ruler around us. He has 500 and potentially a thousand. So we need to go this direction first. These aren't easy to get. They look small, but they're really hard to get because they have such low supply limits that they'll absolutely crush you with just existing. But we'll go anyway. So what we do is declaring war loses us prestige, which we can't even do right now. Oh God, we don't have any prestige to, to declare wars. Can we declare war against you without losing prestige? Yeah, we could invade Comania. Other Manichaean rulers might be called in. Is that a religion? Yes, and there's not a lot of them. So this would be fine. Let's convert our guys here let's do that let's convert get them on the buddhist train so he's our best option right now we lose 100 prestige for declaring going in minus prestige it's never good if we win it we get 200 prestige and we get all the lands well well they become our vassal I think we could go for the subordination or the conquest what is the conquest how much does it cost nothing 
We, we might go for conquest, honestly. Those cost us nothing and do give us prestige. If we win it. We could just conquer their stuff. But probably the invasion would be better. In the long run. I mean, these... Give us 50% of their income and they don't give us anything. We can call him into wars. But he has merely 500. Let's do the invasion. No, we can't even. Right, it's, it's locked for us. We can't. So we're going to do conquest stuff. We'll conquer this thing there. Let's immediately start. That's all you're gonna do. And we will raise our vassal levies by clicking this button. Calling all our vassals. And you'll see how many are going to respond to it. So this guy doesn't have a choice. These guys also come. This girl will be our new concubine and we join the warrior thingy the lodge good we have a new advisor slot we'll give it to one of our concubines improving their opinion of us or Give it to our wife. She shall be our advisor. Let's check the laws anyway. I oh, know we become bitter rivals with this guy down there. That's all right. So let's tell everyone to attach to us. As you can see, not everyone joined us. Only two of our clans have joined us. We could call in another clan because I think their leader just switched. Yeah. Either they converted or they switched. One of them. So this census here are really, really, really great. Let's see. Does it give us a modifier negative if we call them into a war? No, it doesn't. Let us call him in. And he will also attach please let's go to uh, speed 3 which is the best speed to play this game at any rate I'm not too concerned with the monarch's journey tasks so far okay you wish us to focus on rulership I just switched to business so I will not be able to switch this anytime soon but all right. Okay, so our first battle is about to commence. With our own troops here. But we got some reinforcements joining, as do they. But ours will arrive first, and they're larger anyway. Please going there now. We have lost... Oh no, he's, he's still coming. So we'll just wait for him to come. For some reason... They didn't 
attack. They came, but they didn't attack. I don't think we're catching them. They are able to get away. What exactly are we fighting over? Khartoum. This place here. Right, let's mint for glory and profits both. Because we can't lose 100 gold. We stand to gain a little bit from getting both these. And we become an aspiring trader, getting plus one stewardship. Those focuses really help build up. Okay, so these you can't really hold. The only way to hold these is to have someone sit there. See, if you if you move off, you lose it again. So you need to take the capitals. A noble uh, seeking burp. Uh, let's send them back to the Chinese. Worst thing is they don't care. Worst thing that can happen is they don't care. So what we could do as we send these guys here down to siege this and we send the orange guys with the tree over to siege this and everyone else stays attached to us we can fight the battles prestige is everything for these people so it is also very smart to send your son off to become a mercenary as soon as you can what also is important is population growth and manpower growth. Are oh, we lost race with the Song Empire? Did we even have any? Might have. So, you see the clan, the tribal homes you can besiege. Speaking of which, we should probably make sure that we upgrade our own tribal home. Which does cost money. And look at all the things you can do. There's such a large amount of choices. So let's check. Uh, cavalry defense, no. What we want is population and manpower growth. Those are what we want. Nomad tax and all that is fine. But we're looking for manpower growth primarily. Population growth. I think it's just population growth that you can go for. I don't think there is such a thing as manpower growth. So we check which has the highest manpower growth. Uh, population growth, I'm sorry. This is 1%. That is 3%. 1%. Land sentiment is also not bad, but... 2% plus morale of armies, which is also pretty damn good. Movement speed is amazing. Max population we don't need right now. Okay, so we're going to go for the A-Rug producer, which is a alcoholic beverage made from fermented mare's milk, I believe. Okay, let's set uh. Yeah, you need to siege these. Nothing for it. Cool, one of our guys leading horses has learned how to lead light infantry. Well done, man. Well done. So this is how you win them. You fight the armies, you take the capitals. That's really all you can do. Manpower is critical. Don't, don't let it fall too far. Low manpower is really, really bad stuff. Bad juju. Okay, let's attack him. Crossing a river. Oh yes, let's organize an expedition. And we want strong pack animals for the journey. And of course he will join us. Off to foreign lands we go. Our troops are fighting. Alright, and we won. 
Let's just finish this battle. And we offer peace, enforcing our demands. So we have taken this land now. So this is ours. It is all... Stuff. We could build temples. That's really all that we can do. Uh, everything else is just you have your normal nomad county capital. But what you want is all these... Well, lots of slots, because those help you with manpower. So the, the singular ones, the ones that have just one piece, are really, really not great. Your clans are going to ask for land at some point. Why will they pass from our realm? Yes, let's give this man a mighty elephant. We'll move our armies over here. Let's check out this guy. 4,800. Oh, look. There's revolt going. Okay, we need to get our armies out of here and then we can attack the revolt for another piece of land. Conquest of this, probably. And we'll besiege him and we'll call in all our allies and all clans are joining. Which is good stuff. As you can see, now that our prestige is going up, people start liking us better. Very good, we get a bunch of money and prestige out of it. We're going to repay someone a little bit. Five gold, there you go, man. Have it. Knock yourself out, enjoy. You can't even tell your vassals to besiege there. It doesn't, doesn't work like that. So what we're going to do is we're just going to invest heavily into this because it's uh, one of the better things you can do. You want your retinues to come from prestige. Because you're going to earn much more prestige than you're going to earn gold. That's a definitive fact of life on this one, really. You want prestige troops. Once you can afford them, you also want some piety troops and stuff, but you don't earn all that much of it. So prestige troops and high prestige are your main ways of dealing with this stuff out here. So once we've successfully sieged this, we should probably be at 100%. But we'll have to see. There we go. Victory is done. So we offer some peace, enforcing our demands. Gaining more land. And again, the clans are going to be like, hey, you're growing. We also want to grow. Let's grow together. How much do you have? Much. Invasion of Sibir. Can't do that. We could subjugate. For 500 prestige. But it's not really worth it. We need land. Invade. Or subordinate. We don't have any borders with them. See, they're really strong. And we can potentially field 4,200. Now, the difference between us and them is that we have horses. And horses are crazy good in this game. Especially against early type feudals. Because they bring, like, heavy infantry, light infantry, very few pike. Very few pike. If we check their holding, say they have very little pike. And pike is really the best thing you can do against horses. All the rest is going to get pretty much crushed. So we're going to expand our own retinue a little bit. By adding a few more cheap-ish... Cheap-ish... Marauders. I would say two. Two more. Well, let's go with one of these and one of these. 
Light cavalry attack. It was down by 30%. I'm not a big fan of that. So the one with gold are the best because they don't give you a negative modifier. But for now... Ah, let's go with two of these. What's the harm, right? So we'll accumulate our troops here. You don't really need to have them sit at home. It's not something you need. Let's check out what we can do. We can duel. We can appoint someone as a shield maiden. Sister or daughter. You are more resilient to battle injuries. Okay, leading troops give us stuff. But what I really want is some... Uh, some pregnancies, please. Alright, let's check this out. See, we got a bunch better situations now. And once they ask for land, we're going to give land to our bonded clan. We have five, uh, five out of eight clans. We could have more clans. Don't really need to. Not right now, anyway. But we could, say, absorb a clan. Or something like it, if, if someone... ...defies us too much. From our perspective there. But this was already a good start. Start. But, again, we need to be careful. This needs to go up. How do we do this again? Potential manpower growth is 253. And we are at 25. Not a lot. If unused manpower... We're not going to build a garden. That just costs money. It does give prestige, but it's, it's not worth it. Not the trade-off. So we can't expand this forever. We need to allow them to kind of catch up to what they need to be, size-wise. Subjugate. Definitely not going to do that. We're also not going to invade. Or oh, we could extort tribute. Or establish a tributary. Which could be sensible. Why can't we invade? Our population is not greater or equal of 50% of max. Something here just changed, which is good stuff. We can declare war against them. Conquer, conquer this thing. Yes, three... Th Thousand manpower. That's not a lot. Okay, let's let's conquer everything we can. Always go for conquests. And of course, we will call in everyone, and everyone will join as well. So we have one clan. What are you? What are you? There's two men who just kind of popped up out there. Like, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll join. Sure, we'll join. Let's always go for population growth early on. This is important. Gives us the option to go and... Attack using invasion, Kaza spellies. 
We have just these two guys here. Which is part of our mighty, mighty host. Lovely. Concubine is pregnant. Good stuff. Attack them right away. I don't have any more troops anyway. Oh, look, another rebellion up there. Another good stuff there. Can't declare what we need to stand these down. These are terrible for us. Why is our council against this? Odd. Oh well, we'll not question it. Let's tell... Who's already here? Someone. No idea who. So I believe our population growth very much decides what we get here. So the I don't I don't know. I need I need to read up on potential manpower. I'll figure it out. And we'll talk about it. But for now we're just going to siege these clan holdings here. Probably just send our uh, vassal to do everything. He's strong enough. Oh no, we have some smugglers at home. At least we're earning money again instead of losing it. I think we should establish a territory out here. One of them. This guy, maybe. 5,400. Again, it should be fine. Even if we're outnumbered, we should win. Gain the daughter. And we win this one. Done and done. Can we declare war against these now? Yes, we can. Let's conquer. Do you have anything special? No. All the same. We'll conquer Ob. Oh no. Do we want to subordinate? What does it cost us? 300 prestige. If we win, we don't get prestige back. So we're just going to conquer and conquer and conquer and keep going with that. Let's get our allies in. Everyone will join. So we'll send this guy and this guy there. And everyone else. Uh, bu 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 bum. Allies and more. Everyone else will just go hunt the enemy. Do that. We will send our own troops here. Because this one is being lost. Shameful display. Alright, so this I think is our strongest clan. Which one's our strongest clan? Wrong tree. A street. This is our clan. So with him. Can't get a patrol but with him. Maybe with him. Hmm. 
Doesn't seem to work like I expected it to. We definitely want to be proud. Monthly prestige. Yeah. Oh no, we have chest pains. That's not good. Not really being helped. We will trust her word. Another revolt to attack. This is... This is really playing in our favor. All these revolts. Let's send our troops there. Um, okay, Viscard, very good. Another prestige modifier. I don't know exactly why my people are not going here. Oh, there, you're already there. Oh, they are there. They are finishing this. 99%. He surrenders. So we gain more prestige and more land. Boy needs education and we keep pushing you towards military. You're not good at it, but we want you to get it. Time to conquer this thing. And since we're already right there, we'll just take it ourselves. So far, no one has asked us to get anything back. Our spy master was almost killed protecting our life, apparently. So if we lose our stuff, Kaganate, we can get it back not the end of the world. It's not so great. Not something you really want, but... Can deal with it. Thus ends this war. Alright, there's the land demand. Stuff. Can't declare war against him. Already war in war against him. Can't declare against him. Can declare against him. Subjugate. Hmm. Subjugate or tributary? The uh, the tough choice. I don't know if I want to deal with non horse lord vassals there. We share a border with you now? Can't invade yet. Alright, so let's take care of the clan wanting land. As you can see, they're all kind of unhappy. But we're just going to give it to them. And we're going to give them some of the terrible land we just got. It doesn't matter, by the way, if your land is combined together or not. It just does not matter one bit. You can have the complete and utter craziness... You just want to hold the ones that have the most slots. That's what you want. Everything else you can give away. It does not matter one bit. So we're going to give it to him. We're going to give him something. I don't know. Uh, itish. Irtish. There. Have it. Enjoy. Clans are all happy. This clan specifically. And we're strengthening them. They're not the smallest clan, but they're also not the biggest. All right, I'll read up a little bit on manpower growth, how we can uh, help that, how we can reach the potential manpower growth. And yeah, we'll slowly work our way through this.